Welcome, welcome folks. I am Technivers. Today we're going to be taking a look at some Kira plugins. Now these are known as extensions and you can find these by clicking on the marketplace icon up here. They do take a minute to load so I have it preloaded. We're going to jump right into this right now so stay tuned. Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivers. All right, here we are at the marketplace. We can see all our extensions here that are possible to download. There are quite a few in here if you take a look and check them out. Let's see, let's find one that I know. This is one that we're gonna be taking a look at today. This is Arc Welder. If you look, you can see under brand it says Field of View. Now, that's not a brand, that's a user, and he makes a ton of extensions. Most of the extensions we're looking at today are gonna be made by him. So, uh, Arc Welder is a good one, as well as uh, material settings we will look at and thingy browser we will look at and a couple more so the way that you install these is by clicking on it and then clicking install I already have mine installed once you install a new extension you're gonna have to restart Kira so go ahead and install the ones that you want to try out and then restart Kira and in our case today we're gonna be looking at arc welder of course we're gonna be looking at one called calibration shapes another one called thingy browser there is a mesh tools extension and a material settings extension so we'll take a look at all of those and if you see here you can see in my installed you can see I'm gonna be looking at arc welder um, barbarian units is one we've covered in another video this basically converts metric to inches and inches to metric so it's a good way to see what your size is gonna be in inches if that's something that you want um, I installed it I don't use it very often I have tested it, it works pretty well uh, but everything else is in metric so if it ain't broke don't fix it um, but we are going to be looking at calibration settings, or excuse me, calibration shapes, material settings, mesh tools, and thingy browsers. So, those are all installed. I have restarted Kira. Let's take a look. The first one I want to start with is actually the calibration shapes, because when setting up your printer, this is an amazing tool to have. If you click extensions, all of your new extensions that are installed once restarting should show up here and we're looking for part for calibration and as you can see there's a giant menu here full of parts and not only does it have these primitive shapes such as cylinders, spheres, cubes and tubes it also has a standard calibration cube and several other standard calibration tests so if I just go ahead and click on let's do the calibration cube that's one of the simplest ones you can see it is marked for X Y and Z it is 20 by 20 by 20 and I don't need to go searching around for where I put that file to use for my calibration tests. And the same with the rest of these, I can actually go in and say I want to do a, I got a new PLA and I want to print a temp tower. Well, here's this one. Um, it is not sliced already, but you can see using this extension did turn on one of my post-processing scripts. So I'm going to be using this. Um, to slice this and I'll actually add a bunch of different pauses pausing at different layers to slice that up so you do still have to slice it yourself but it is nice to have the models all in one place and the other thing is I always complain that there is no add-in for primitives in Kira so I mean you can use this with the support system to add this in and then designate it as support um, you know, there's there's lots of possibilities with this you could even build your own model just out of primitives if you wanted by resizing rotating things like that and that can be a fun exercise as well so that's pretty much it for the part calibration like I said there's a lot of different tests here you're gonna to want to run on your printer and get them dialed in in order to get that perfect print to get that great profile for your machine so let's move on to the next one while we're talking about say temp towers and PLAs let's look at material settings so I'm gonna go here and click configure material settings now we talked about this in the last video that when you add a material it basically gives you the chance to change just the temperature settings and things like that when I open this menu you can see the majority of these are not clicked other than default printing temperature default build plate temperature and a couple more so we are gonna go ahead and click printing temperature and printing temperature initial layer and initial printing temperature and that should be good enough just to kind of demonstrate what this does. So then we'll hit close and we'll go in here and we'll take a look. Let's see, I want to manage materials. That's what I want to do. And 
and now you can see when I go into print settings here, I have all of these extra settings turned on. So let's see if we can demonstrate that in real time. I'm not sure. No, it won't let me click it. But um, we have the ones that we just added in here instead of the standard ones. So in this way, using this system and finding the exact ones that are going to change with each type of filament, then you would have an advantage switching between material profiles instead of just switching between printing profiles. So um, I'm going to be getting into another video on just this extension and we will cover the arc welder extension in its own video too but i think there's a lot here so once i dial in what those settings are that you really want to have with your material i will let everybody know and kind of show you how to set it up so that way you can just quick click between materials instead of changing all these settings all the time and that's the way that it's meant to be it just doesn't affect enough settings in the generic style so this extension is a big big add-on and improvement for using materials so Definitely one worth checking out. Let's move on to the next one, and that is going to be Thingy Browser. Now, this one I've covered before as well, but they do have updates to it. A lot of people don't like Thingiverse, and that's okay, but I can tell you that Thingy Browser, this extension, works a lot better than the actual website and is a lot more reliable. However, if you just adamantly do not like Thingiverse, inside Thingy Browser is the option to also scan my mini factory so if that's where you'd like to get your models you can use that instead of thingiverse um, i haven't experienced thingiverse being down through the extension even when i've noticed it's down on the website so uh, this is a very handy extension to have too if you're just looking for models to print or you want some inspiration or you're looking for something that you saw on either my mini factory or thingiverse um, it's just a quick search bar and it works really well all you have to do is click details to see more about the model and then add build plate. The nice thing about this is hmm, file could be corrupt or inaccessible. That's great. Let's try a different one. I like the Mandalorian. Let's do this one. And we'll do the child. Okay, well I'm having issues getting them from... That's weird. Never had issues with uh, my mini factory before. As you can see, Thingiverse just threw it right onto the build plate, first one I grabbed. So it's possible that since some files on my mini factory are pay files, that that's why it won't let me grab them. But um, this is also a great extension. Like I said, you can do multiple files. Um, the Thingiverse ones do work really well. I don't know what was up with that with uh, my mini factory there. But like I said, it could have something to do with the pay to play method they have going on over there. Um, let's just grab another one real quick to show you that it does work and there you have it add to build plate there's one piece of that little cube that you saw so um, that is a pretty cool extension like i said i've covered that before but it's one worth mentioning because it is a quick way to grab models and in fact before this part calibration extension um, that was how i grabbed calibration cubes because it was actually easier to go to thingy browser and just search than it was to search through all my files on my hard drive no joke sorry it's it's sad but it's true uh, my wife says my desktop gives her anxiety if that uh, clues you into anything. So there was one, no, two more. So mesh tools. Um, this is one that is pretty cool. I actually, I think I have a model I can use to fix this, and I do know right where it's at. So hang on one second. Go to my aforementioned scary desktop and grab this guy. And, ooh, this one's not manif manifold either. All right, so I'm dragging in two models. We'll test out this mesh tools here real quick because it's supposed to be able to fix tiny holes and fix non-manifold objects and things like that. So um, let's take a look. Let's select this object. Still loading, loading the other one. Oh, -de -da. oh man, I think I broke it. I'm like out of coffee and that's depressing all right well it looks like it's back but it's not because it's not letting me move so where did you put the joker bust and time stands still ah geez all right i had to pause the video for a second but we're back all right and we have this area here and this is shown actually by mesh tools um so that's the one that we want to use because that's the one that it's telling me that it can most likely fix let's get rid of this daydream model here let's take this guy and for posterity's sake, we'll set him up right. 
Maybe. You just eating through my memory today, Kira? Because I got 16 gigs and you seem to be just dragging ass. Alright. Oh, this is annoying. I apologize. Alright. I think we're finally caught back up. So now that I've accidentally rotated too much, we'll fix that. And we'll quit messing around. Give that time to catch up instead of clicking around. Okay. So up here in extensions is where I'm going to find my mesh tool menu. And it says to... Let's do analyze models. See what we get. We should probably get that same error about it not being watertight. It does take a minute to calculate. I mean, it's checking the parameters of all of the mesh itself. And this one is actually pretty high poly for such a small model. So it doesn't surprise me that it's taking a minute here. All right. So the analysis didn't actually give us an error. It gave us a vertice and face count. So, um, yeah, that's quite quite a lot of faces for such a tiny model and that's why it's taking so long to calculate when I do stuff like this so let's go ahead I'll take the time to calculate to make this model larger and let's see it's too big for the build plate So we'll take him down a notch. Scooch your caboose over there. Oh, he almost fits. Yeah, you're right. At this point, I'm just playing around. There we go. Okay, so um, there are some errors you can see on the model. I know it's hard to see because the color of the filament right now is red. I'm not going to bother changing that. Let's go to our mesh tools it said to preview it said to use x-ray mode slice and then we'll be able to switch our view type here and go into x-ray mode we should see any holes and then we'll use that fix holes and see if that helps so let's let this slice Okay, so here we are sliced up and in x-ray mode. So let's see if we can fix some of this mesh. Um, fix simple holes. Let's try this. And after fixing, I got an error, and it just disappeared, but it said this mesh needs more extensive repair before being watertight. Now, I have printed this model as is before, and I've had pretty good luck with both FDM and SLA, so I'm not really too worried that it wouldn't have made it perfect, um, but any improvement is a good improvement. As I said, this is also a super complicated model, and that's why it takes so long to process, but those mesh fixer tools are pretty handy and let's see what else is in that tab real quick um, we can analyze we tried let's do check and this is this one should give me that error let's I gotta select the model first all right extensions mesh tools check models again it's probably gonna take forever because it's gonna go over all of those vertices and everything so give it just a minute here to do its work and here we are. It does say that it is not watertight and may not print properly. It consists of 32 sub meshes. So that is giving us our error and telling us that it's not watertight. From there, we could go through and try a couple more mesh fixes. Now, like I said, I don't really have problems with this model. I'm not going to mess with it too much further. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because it is slowing me way down. And we're going to talk about our last extension, which is not shown in our extensions list and that's because it's over here under special modes and arc welder so if I select this it gives me a couple more options basically what arc welder does is it's gonna turn straight lines that form circles on your model into arcs so it's gonna change the G code command from telling it to print a straight line into telling it to print an arc and this is gonna lead to a lot smoother curves so if you'd like to know more about arc welder make sure you subscribe we're going to be doing a dedicated video to that in the next couple of days so we will go over it exactly what it does how it works and things like that 
as well as how to use these settings right here. But since we're talking about extensions already and you're probably downloading a few, I figured I'd throw it in there and have you download it so you were ready to go in testing it out when we try it out in the next day or two. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Like I said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Please leave a like, and we will see you in the next one. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.